Hey YouTube, what's up? Uh, I think I got a pretty exciting removal for you. This is from a yellow jacket ground nest that I did on August 28th uh, after work for a coworker. Uh, so enjoy the video. All right, let's get this started. So this was after work, very hot day. It's a ground nest. And as you're gonna find out, I was stung seven times during this removal on the top of the head. I believe these were Eastern yellow jackets. If anyone knows for sure, please comment below. Stick around here. It takes a few seconds to get this colony going, but as you'll see soon, once I got them to start coming out, it was pretty crazy. Now, before I even started, when I got up near this hole, I did notice probably 20 or 30 that were all floating within like a foot or two of the ground, just real slowly, uh, which is not normally what I see. Normally you'll see them coming straight up and out and then they, they kind of go wherever they go. Right now at this point, I was still thinking this would be a fairly tame colony. Uh, it didn't really start off too fast or anything like that. So I was thinking I was in for a pretty easy job. Now you'll see here in a moment, right where I stuck that drywall saw in, it went straight in. So I knew the cavity was right there. There was no resistance whatsoever. At this point, using the drywall saw wasn't really enticing them out. So I took that shovel and I just basically started to hit the ground right around where I thought that cavity was. And as you can see, they immediately started pouring out probably 20, 30 at a time. The method that I'm using in this video is basically just a small shop vac with about a gallon of water uh, and some dish soap inside. Uh, despite a lot of my recent videos, this is my preferred method, but as I said recently, the ones that I've filmed that I've put on here have mainly been the Delta dust or the Tempo dust. This is part of the reason why I like doing ground nests. It's usually pretty good for videoing. It's, it's kind of cool watching them come out and then immediately get sucked into that hose. Uh, some of the other types of removals that I do, especially if I am using the vac, it can be pretty hard for me to get a good angle where you can really see what's going on. And that's typically why I don't upload those videos. Now, what you can't really see right now is the rest of the swarm that was slowly gathering around me. Uh, that was one problem with only using one camera today. It was kind of hard to see the ones flying around, but there was probably about, I would say 50 to 100 uh, at this point that were starting to fly around me and cling to my gloves, cling to my suit. So I knew I was kind of in for it and that these were pretty aggressive. This nest was pretty much in the middle of their yard. Uh, the coworker had told me that their dog had been stung and they have a very young daughter. I believe she's 18 months old. Uh, who's walking and stuff like that. So this nest was in a bad spot. I'm surprised that people hadn't been stung uh, up until this point in the summer, but this nest definitely had to go. As you can see here, I already had several clinging to my gloves. Uh, there's several times in the video that I try to show my hands, but pretty much the entire way through this, I had anywhere between five and probably 20 stuck to my gloves. That was just constantly pulling off. Here's a quick view of my setup. Typically I just use this five gallon bucket head shop vac uh, with a little bit of soapy water inside. I've done quite a few removals recently, so there was definitely a lot drawn to this vac just from the pheromone that these things kick off when they're in alarm mode. Uh, even at the end of the, the day here, you know, the, the coworker noticed a few just sort of hovering around the bucket as I was carrying it out. Here's another shot of my hand, and I'm not even using this hand to do anything. These are just ones that are attacking me as I'm sitting there. Now, as you've been seeing, I've pretty much been 
sucking up all of those ones trying to come out so far. I've only missed, you know, one or two here or there. Uh, the remainder that are flying around me are pretty much the foragers that were out. This was at the end of the day. It was a really hot day, so there was a lot out. And the numbers of this colony were just massive. I've definitely learned some lessons the hard way with these ground colonies. Uh, one thing that I learned quite a few years ago was to just keep at them and don't think that you got the entire colony out because I've dug too soon and then realized that there were still just hundreds and hundreds inside there. So as you can see, I, I kind of pound the ground for a while and then I take a break and I hit it a few more times and, and they just keep pouring out. A nest like this would have started with one founding queen that survived the winter. Uh, she was already fertilized from the year prior. And in the spring at some point she came out and this was most likely like a chipmunk hole or something like that. Uh, you know, she found the spot for the location, started to build the nest, lay eggs, and basically begin to hatch out workers. Uh, so this is the end of August now. So the colony's grown in size. And as that colony continued to expand, the workers slowly excavated out just small pieces of dirt. Uh, and you'll see, once I do open this up, the, the size of the colony hole was, was just a little bit smaller than a soccer ball. So they had excavated out quite a bit of work, uh, carried that out, flew it out somewhere in the yard, and then dropped it. One common misunderstanding is these colonies in Pennsylvania typically do not survive over the winter. Um, their entire goal is basically to lay eggs. The eggs turn into larvae, the larvae pupate into adults. The cycle continues on. And then towards the end of the year, they start to hatch out queens. Those queens will fly out and then mate with drones. And then those queens will be next year's queens that go burrow into the ground or a log, survive the winter. And then the cycle continues. Now, watch what happens here whenever I do start to dig out the nest. I barely put even, I'd be surprised if that was a pound of pressure. And as you can see, that's just sod basically that collapsed straight down in. Uh, and then what you have under that's the cavity where the nest is. Now that I have two holes, this is where these start to become a little bit more interesting. Uh, when you have that main original point of entry, either on a ground nest or even on a hanging nest, um, you have that one point to focus on. They're all drawn to that. As you can see here, now I'm gonna start missing some and I still will have some flying to that original hole. So this is where the swarm will start to pick up a little bit. You know, there was probably still at least 100, 150 in that nest whenever I opened that ground up. Somewhere right around this point is where I started to notice a few things going on, possibly inside of my veil. Um, at first I kind of thought maybe my mind was just playing tricks on me, but I did eventually realize that I'd had at least one on the inside of my veil. So they had basically gotten through my suit somewhere and got inside. What I'm about to do in a moment is put the phone down. I walk away from the swarm and I start to take my veil off. And that's right when the first one nails me right in the top of the head one time. Now, I didn't get it on camera, so I apologize for that if that's what you want to see. All right, so how'd they get in, right? Uh, so these bee suits, if you're not familiar, have multiple zippers. So there's a zipper here in the front. There's this flap that kind of contains them. My theory is this flap always has a little bit of play and they probably got in here. So when I first started doing this, I used a lot more kind of duct tape to hold this all down. And honestly, I've gotten complacent over the years, but under this flap, two other zippers for the hood. And then obviously the main zipper. Also on this suit is a zipper at each leg. Now, typically if I'm doing ground nest removals, I'll use these heavy boots and tuck everything in. 
and then I also have these gloves that when they're on they'll come up to about here and they use elastic so there's lots of different places that these can fly in obviously on this removal several did I checked this suit out there's no holes uh, the only hole I actually have is in my gloves which you'll see if you notice in a lot of my videos I keep these fingers tightly closed but something I've been dealing with I do like these gloves okay so we're back I recollected myself for a minute or two um, now I will admit at this point now I'm just trying to get this thing done and uh, so I'm starting to spray a little bit more try to get the swarm down try to get some of the ones off of me so that first thing really didn't affect me too much I mean it hurt a little bit I don't really typically think that they hurt that much um, I'm not allergic or I've at least never been before uh, you always have to be aware of that, especially with one to the head. But at this point, I'm, I'm still doing all right. I'm just trying to get this thing done and wrapped up. Plus, it's really hot out today. All right, so now I pretty much have a lot of the ones in the nest that are that are flying out wrapped up so I'm, I'm digging this thing out some more and as you can see as i do that i get a few more coming out from here to the rest of the video I'm just slowly kind of excavating this nest out Right about here is probably the first layer or two of comb that came out. It's a little bit hard to see because it's still pretty covered in dirt. You can start to see the size of this cavity and most of its nest. I mean, when I'm reaching down in there, I can clearly feel where I'm hitting hard ground versus like where that nest still is. It is pretty amazing to me how much dirt these yellow jackets can excavate out. I mean, they're pretty much carrying them out a small little handful at a time, flying it out, dropping it somewhere. And while they're doing that, they're still building the comb, expanding the outer layers of the nest. So there's a lot of stuff going on at once. Right about now is where I start to realize I have another problem. So I could now feel at least one or two more inside of my veil again. Actually, one of the two crawled into my ear for a second, crawled across my neck. So as you can imagine, not a great feeling, especially after already being stung once. And what happened here is I put the phone down, walked away, went to take the veil off, and six more stings to the head. Once that happened, I did kind of pace around for a little bit, and then I ended up sitting down up at the porch, uh, drank some water. I took a little bit of Benadryl, just precautionary. I never had like an allergic reaction or anything, but between the stings and the heat, uh, I took some time and watched the nest from the porch. I was trying to get that swarm down as much as possible. The vac was still running. So I would say all said in total, I probably sat there for at least 30 minutes, uh, if not more. Okay, so here you'll see the catch inside the bucket. Uh, this thing was absolutely loaded down. I would estimate the size to be at at least 500, probably more. It's just hard to say. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you liked this content. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions at all, please comment them down in the comment bar and I'll get back to you. Uh, and also, on my channel, pinned to the comments, 
I'm going to have my playlist of all these videos. So if you want to watch other removals that I've done, uh, I have other videos on that playlist of just wasp removals. As I often say, like I do a lot of removals. I don't film a lot or the video just doesn't turn out, but I'm trying to do more to get more content up. Thanks for watching the video and stop by again. See you.